So today's project in the metal shop is to create some soft jaws. Our drawer is looking a little bit low and we have a lot of bench vices. So we're going to make a couple of these. I'm going to show you the basics of how to make one, some simple sheet metal project right here. All right. First thing you need to start off with is some material. We're going to be creating ours according to this shape. This is based on how wide the actual jaw is here, or the uh, how wide the vise is. Ours are about four inches, but we're going to make them about four and a quarter, so there's a little bit of overhang. So to do this, you need a piece of sheet metal that is five and three quarter inches by two and a half. I'm going to be using this material right here because I still have a bunch of it left. I'm going to lay out three, one, two, three, but I'll show you how to make one. We want to utilize our sheet metal as best we can so we are not wasting. So let's get to work. So the tools that you're going to need for drawing this, you'll need a rule or ruler, straight edge, something that has numbers on it. You're going to want a square, a scribe, and probably a center punch for two holes that we're going to be adding. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using a Sharpie to lay out the line so you can see it a little bit better. But when you actually build it, use a scribe so that you get perfect lines. A Sharpie is not going to be exact because of the width of the tip. Thin tip versus probably about an eighth of an inch. It's not super accurate. So first thing, let's lay out the five and three quarter inches here. I'm going to draw a line on one side. Line up your edge of your rule with the other edge of the sheet metal. I'm doing five and three quarters. I'm going to make my little scratch. I'm going to go down here and do the exact same thing. Use your rule, line up those two scratch marks, get them as perfect as possible. You could also use this. Line it up. But it's not long enough, so I like to use it. So it closely. There's our first step. Right there. Five and three quarters from the end. Now I'm gonna draw out my width, which is two and a half. One of these is going to end up being just under two and a quarter, so that will be a smaller set of soft jaws. That's all right. Always work from one side when doing your measurements in case your piece is not perfectly square. So now you can see my basic layout for one, two, three of these. I'm going to go and cut these on the foot shear. Bring your metal to the foot shear and use one of these side fences essentially so that you get a 90 degree cut here. You're going to want to look down the crack in between the blade and this part that kind of clamps it down. You see when I press the foot pedal it clamps it. You want to look at the edge of the table and that's where we're going to line up our line. So if you look closely you can see that edge right there. Just focus that. You can see the edge. That is what we're lining up our lines with. So if I'm back here and my line's here, clearly it's going to cut it in the wrong place. So I want to move it forward and get it as close as I can. You can see that little mark right there. Quickly added some Sharpie marks here just so you can see the lines a little bit better. When I use a Sharpie though, I want to use one edge to line up so it's not down the middle of the Sharpie. It's actually going to be on the edge of the line. So I did one there and one there just so you can see it better. When I do stick it in the shear, there we go, I want to look at through the crack and look at both lines. You can see one there and one there. Be very careful just in case maybe your piece has gone crooked. I'm trying to make it crooked on purpose there. There we go. Line it up as best you can. So not in the middle of the Sharpie line, but at the edge. Make sure it's perfectly where you want it to be. Hold your piece with one hand, use your foot to clamp it down and then do your cut. So now that piece is cut, I can see these here. But if you are doing this, you only need one. You really only need one of those, but I'm gonna maximize my material to make three. Go ahead, cut these lines here as well on the Beverly Shear. So now that I have my pieces, according to my plans, just I'm gonna make a proper AutoCAD drawing of this later. AutoCAD drawing of this later. We're gonna lay this out according to this drawing. The main area is going to be four and a quarter, and these tabs are going to be bent. They're three quarter inch wide. We're going to lay out a small spot here that's half an inch. 
draw a 45 degree angle down here to the center. Now this angle doesn't exactly have to be 45. We may have to trim it. Measure three quarter, go down half an inch, and then just connect this with your center line here. So I'm gonna go ahead first, draw my center line, and then lay out my other lines here. So this is my center line. That's where I will have one bend. You can kind of see it depending on the light. You can see my line down the middle there. Now let's add the tabs. They're gonna be three quarters of an inch wide. Same thing at the bottom. And this is where you could also be using the machine square. You could line it up like that. I'd like using a ruler for most everything. Use the tools that you have available. Okay, you can start to see that taking shape. Let's see if I can get that light to work. So I have a center line and now I have lines for my tab here. You can see that a little bit. There we go if I change the light. All right, let's finish the tabs. We're gonna add our angles now. So here we're measuring half an inch. And I'm choosing to do this one in Imperial just because Imperial or metric does not really matter. So now I have those marks and I'm gonna connect this line down to my center. Okay, now that that's laid out, I'm going to have to do some cutting and then I'll be doing some bending. I'm going to use a sharpie and draw in the parts that we're cutting off just to make it a little bit easier to see visually. So I'm going to go ahead and get these things cut. First I'm going to do a small hole or a center punch here. That's going to help me stop cutting when I start cutting with my aviation snips. I'm going to do this punch. Uh, quickly and then come back. So on the Whitney punch, I have an eighth inch punch right there. Make sure that this is actually tight. If it's all the way down here, it's not going to work. Make sure that is up all the way. It's basically just a big hole punch. Don't put your fingers right here or you're going to crush your knuckles. Make sure your hands are down at the end. So I'm going to line this up kind of with my center right on that X. And you can see I have a hole right there. It's okay if it's a little bit off. There we go. Let's go finish the cuts. So there's different snips we can use. We can use pin snips or a pair of av aviation snips, whatever works best for you. I'm going to do it first with these and let's see if these are actually sharp at all. Follow your lines carefully. You can file them if they're not perfect. Snip and then stop. Let's get to that hole. That's why we drilled that hole, so you don't accidentally cut all the way in here. Next one. Let's see if I can get that a little closer. That was easy. Try never to fully close your snips all the way like that. You'll end up creating a dimple. I always stop when I'm about here, and then I adjust and move forward. All right, this is pretty much all cut out. I might quickly use a file to round the edges a little bit just so that there's no bumps. You can see a small burr has happened here when I punch that hole. Let's grab a file quickly. So I have a file. Sometimes you can also use tools like this. It's a deburring tool that works best on the inside of pipe. I can't really do much of it here. So I'm just gonna hit it with a file. Good enough. I can hit the edge of this kind of on an angle maybe just to round it over a little. Give it a feel with your hands to make sure there's no major sharp edges. That feels good. Okay, now we're gonna go bend this. So go to the Diacro bender and make sure you have these in so that you're able to do four and a quarter. I'm using a three inch, and if you look closely, it says one and a quarter. So I'm gonna install that. Careful not to strip the heads of these bolts. If I want to make it perfect, I would not be using an adjustable wrench. These are flush on the front. I'm going to be pulling that down for some parts here. So the first things, 
I want to bend is my tabs, and my final bend will be this middle one. I want to make sure not to make this smaller than here. You can see that this is going to line up at four and a quarter. So I want to be careful how tight I do my bends here. It's okay if you cut them a little bit, bend them a little bit big on the side. So I'm going to line this up with my cut line. You can see my bend line here. So just for visual, I'm going to add a little bit of a Sharpie mark here so you can see where my bend is. And I want to make sure not to make it smaller. So here's mine here. I don't want to go any further than that mark. Ideally, just use your scribe marks, but for the purpose of the video so you can see it a little bit better, I think this works. I'm going to make sure I don't go in all the way. I want to actually see a little bit of space in between those two. Push the handle down on the diacro bender. I'm about a millimeter off my line, which is okay. It'll give me some wiggle room on my jaws. I'm going to lift up the handle and bend this up until it is 90 degrees. You can use a square after to check it. If you're not perfect, we can use our fingers and just bend it back. So pull it up, eyeball until it's 90. We're missing the stops on here. There we go. Open that up and you can take a look and see that we have that set up pretty close to 90. I could use my square on there. Looks pretty good. Sheet metal is mostly bendy, so it'll be all right. Let's do the other side now. Locked in, bend it to 90. Oh, I did about 95, it's a little bit too much. Bend it back, no problem. Open it up. See, so look at that, we have a nice little table for some small animals to have dinner at. There we go, perfect. No, not quite. Now we've got our middle line. We wanna bend this now 90 degrees. So this is exactly why we set the diacro pieces here up at four and a quarter. It fits with a little wiggle room, it's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock that down along the line. As tight as I can get it there. Don't bend until you are 100% happy with where it is. There we go, locked in. Pull it up and we're gonna bend it 90 degrees. And you see here, sometimes those tabs hit each other. That's all right, just kind of bend them in. It's okay if they have a little bit of overlap. Now you can see we have a nice set of soft jaws. Now this is only one. It needs a pair to go with it. So we'll make another one. So this would be a perfect, nice little set of soft jaws. Soft enough that it's not gonna mark any material that it's squished up against. Um, over time, you know, if you get a year or two out of these, these are perfect, and then just make another one. So now my soft jaws can hold material in the vise without scratching it. Thanks for watching. Please double check and ask any questions below if you need help with these kind of projects. Cheers. Bye.